Florence alone at night on the streets of London. Oh, where is her knight in armor now? No father now. No home. No hope. Hello, little sweetie. Where are you going at this time of night? Please, I don't mean any harm. Let me by, please. Underdressed for this weather, ain't you pretty? I'm... I'm going to a friend. The hair all hanging down past your pretty face. Pretty hair. Pretty girly. I'm sorry, I have to go now. I, I must go. Oh, all on your own, then. No, no, I'm not. I'm... I'll be your friend. Why don't you come along with me? Go away! Oh, don't be paying hoity-toity with me, girl. <laughs> Get up! Get up! Leave off, you mad duck! Get off me! Leave, die, leave! Go away now. All right, all right. I'm going. No need for trouble. Mad ducks, mad bitches. Oh, Diogenes, you wonderful dog. Where did you come from? How did you get out? I was praying for a knight to come and save me, and here you are. Only you're more of a knight in a very wet, hairy blanket. But I was never gladder to see anyone. Come along. We must find shelter. We must get out of the rain. Mustn't think about what happened. Not think. Not tonight. Just find somewhere. Somewhere dry. Kidney and bacon. <laughs> Devils on horseback. Jolly towers are our men. We always are ready. Steady, boys, steady. At this time of day, ain't the bailiff's men, surely. Hey, hold hard there, my hearty. Um, uh, what do you mean? It? My lord. Oh, Miss Dumby. Captain, please help me. Right. Get yourself inside at once, Miss D. Lord, girl, you're as soaked as a... Near drowned girl. <laughs> steady, 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 all steady. It's all right, Di. The captain's a friend. Diogenes <clears throat> has been protecting me all night. All night? Lord above. What's about here? Come on through by the fire. Rub yourself in the. In the uh, take those clothes. No, oh no, no, yes. I mean, uh, look. Uh, a wrap and a towel, Captain. <laughs> I'll dry off. But you must change those clothes. I'll send to your... No, send to no one, Captain. There's no one to send to. But what's to be done? Here, here, Miss Dumby. Drink this. It'll warm you. Thank you, Captain. I am... (gasps) (laughs) That'll be the chilies and pepper. Hope they ain't too strong for me. And what's it all about? I had no one else to go to, Captain. And please, you must tell no one that I'm here. I'll tell you what, my hearty, I'll lay a fire in Waller's old room. God bless his memory. Oh, I wish Walter could be here now. No more than I. But you shall warm yourself and dry your clothes. And no one must know what has happened. Not yet, Captain. No one, not a word. Well, I won't have no trouble keeping to that, for I have no idea what has happened. Now, let's get that fire going, eh? Captain Cuttle, not always the sharpest cutlass in the rack, but always the truest heart. And as Florence dries herself and tries to dry Diogenes, other hearts, which beat with no less purpose, follow their paths. Combs and ribbons! Come by from good Mrs Brown, come by from Gypsy Alice. (laughs) Enough, Mother! No one buys today. No one buys in this rain. What a week, girl. <coughs> Not that you seem to care for food. You know what food I want and cold or hot. I don't care how it comes. Oh, you're a fool, Ally. Always were. You can trust coin. You can trust food, but you, you throw it back in their faces. <laughs> only the once. And that only when you told me who she was. His sister. <laughs> Harriet Cock. I told you not to say his name. She don't even hardly speak to that brother of hers. They don't even like each other. What do I care for her? Anyone of that name is my enemy. (laughs) You ain't well, girl. Not you care, old woman. You think I don't? 
You think I wouldn't pick that man's eyes out with my own nails if I could? After what he'd done to you, enough, girl. Enough. He spoiled what you might have sold for profit, that's all. Spoiled goods. That's what you regret. <laughs> you better get inside or you'll catch your death. You old <laughs> fool. I caught my death out there. Caught and bought and sold. Why do you think I came back to that rag and bone yard of yours to live with you? I came back to destroy Karka. Hi, Ali, my sweet. Mr Dombey will help us, though he don't know it yet. <laughs> Hot rum. Oh, no, no, she didn't like the heat. Gin, gin, that'll do it. Easy all. Keep that mouth of yours battened down, Ned Cuttle. No hint of, uh... Captain! Oh. Mr. Toots. Uh, uh, may I come in? Uh, it's raining, you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I suppose it is. Uh, Captain? I, uh, I, 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 I suppose you, you may. Oh. Uh. Oh. Oh. Something wrong with your mouth, Captain? You got a toothache? No! Oh, do you have a visitor? What? Well, it's two glasses. Uh, I, I was expecting you, Toots. Oh. Rum and hot? Y you were expecting me? Oh, because there's no one here. Um, apart from me and you. <gasps> I beg your pardon, Captain? <laughs> rough, rough, rough the weather. It's a rough, wouldn't you say, Toots? Very rough. Captain? No one here at all. Do you keep a dog? <gasps> Occasionally. Occasionally you keep a dog? <gasps> uh, an old sea dog of my acquaintance. Ah, a sea dog. Well, jolly good. <laughs> uh, now, Captain, I'm on an errand. Are you? Brogley. Brogley? Uh, Brogley and Brogley solicitors. It's not another writ, is it? Oh, an urgent message. It is vital you see the fellow, it appears. Vital. Now, at once... Uh, a matter of the utmost. Uh, no! Well, if you could pop round, he said. Oh, I don't like the sound of it, Marty. Well, I'll tell you what, Captain. No. It's no secret. It ain't? That I'm not short of a bit of tin. Oh. And that if you should happen to need, why, if it didn't embarrass you, uh, I'd be more than happy to help. <laughs> that's so. Uh, Mr. Toots, why, that's a handsome offer. I'll scoot right round there. Right away. Uh, uh, don't go upstairs, will oh. you? Because there's... The um, old sea dog. Yes. Couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> Toot company. I... 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 Carker! Where are you, man? Carker has gone. How can such things be in this world? Mr Dombey is looking for his manager. He must be somewhere. Carker! Where are you? Well, he ain't in there. What? Who are you? Only good Mrs Brown, my lord. Will you buy our trinkets? Here, Alice, show the gentleman what you've got to sell. I can assure you that I have no wish to buy. Of brushes and combs, sir, and fine linen handkerchiefs that any gentleman might be happy to have. <laughs> have I seen you before? No, sir, no, you'd not have seen me. I've been abroad. <laughs> now get away, get away. You've nothing I want. I wasn't that way once, sir. Oh, no. The gentlemen all wanted pretty Alice once. Aye, and they were prepared to pay. For, after all, what can't money buy? <laughs> Be off with you. What can't money do? Now you'll get no money out of me. <laughs> Carter, where are you? A shilling. A sixpence would see a swarm. A constable will see you in prison, the pair of you. And see how you'd like that. What do you know of the man who lives here? Not home. Not at the office. Not here. Gone away. Far from home, some say. What do you know, woman? He's gone, hasn't he? Yes. He's gone, not to be found. Tell your fortune. Tell you all you want to know, sir. Cross my palm with silver. Oh, come away, mother. He's nothing to us. You are nothing to me. Tell your pass for a copper penny, sir. He's gone away. Packed and gone away. So they say round here. 
gone away at midnight. So they say. Gone where? Who knows? <laughs> who would find out? And who wants to know? I am Dombey. There will be silver. Find out where he is, this Kaka. What is it, woman? Why do you look at me in that way? Do you hate him too? Do you hate him as much as I? Man, are you as proud as once I was? <laughs> Here. Here's a guinea. Buy food, buy medicine. Buy what you need. Don't you fret, my lord. We'll find it out. We'll find all of it out, Alice. Come. And yet I have seen her before. <gasps> the sea dog. The old sea dog. The salty, old, horrible sea dog, I've no doubt. And fierce with it, since sea dogs are by their nature fierce and horrible. Oh, Lord. And I gave my word to the captain that I wouldn't... And Toots' his word is his... It, yes, it's his bond. But is Toots a coward? Hmm. Does Toots run in the face of danger? Yes! There's no one in here! I know. I'll face the wall with my eyes shut and refuse, simply refuse to budge until the old sea dog has gone by. I can assure you I have seen nothing, nothing at all. Why are you licking my hand? Because he recognises you, Mr Toots. <gasps> what? Diogenes? Uh, Miss Dombey? Mr Toots. Oh, oh, I think I need to sit down. No, I'm quite all right. I... Uh, oh. Diogenes has been looking after me. Oh, lucky dog. <laughs> but, uh, Miss Dombey, why? Who? When? I... I'm at a loss. Oh, Mr. Toots, you are my friend. Now poor dear Walter is gone, you and the captain are my only friends. Oh, Miss Dombey, I would wish to be more than your friend. But to be your friend is honour enough. Mr. Toots, I have great need for friends at this time. But where is uh, Miss Nipper, the estimable... Uh, gone. She went? She was sent. Ah, well, this is bad. Worse than you can know, Mr. Toots. Poor Susan was... Turned off, turned away, and I have no idea where she is. None at all? None at all. Except... <gasps> of course! Yes? Mrs Richards, my brother's old nurse. She and Susan were fast friends, and she might know... Where... And where does Mrs Richards live? I will write it down, huh. if you will do this for me. Oh, Miss Dombey, there is not a woman I hold in greater esteem, always excepting yourself, than Miss Susan Nipper. If she can be found, well, then I will find her. Thank you, sir. You really are a friend in need. But why was she sent away? And how come you to be, well, no stouter friend than Captain Cuttle, but to find you here, to find you, if I may say, Miss Dombey, with your hair down, is almost beyond... Oh, who is it? Oh, it'll be Captain Cuttle come back. Uh, he had to step out for a moment. Don't you be scared now. Oh, no. Who, well, who are you, sir? Miss Dombey. Walter? Walter Gay? Oh, oh, Walter, God bless you. The house of Dombey is silent as the grave. No wife, no manager, no daughter. The servants creep about their work, hugging the shadows, anxious not to be seen by their master. Come. The butler attends for his orders, taking care not to let the slightest trace of sympathy show. You may close the upper floors off, Tarleton. There is no further need for them. Sympathy not for the man standing before him. And I shall eat in town. I shall not require... Anything more at this time. But sympathy for the house and the staff and all the memories it contains. For he knows well that this house is dying. You may go, Tarleton. There are still people moving around within it. But they are like bees in a dead hive. 
they too are as the dead. That is all. Florence, Miss Dombey. Oh, I knew it was a bad idea. Oh, I couldn't just arrive on your doorstep, <laughs> Captain. Really, I'm quite all right. It was just, just a surprise. It nearly enough knocked me flat on my back. Oh, dear Miss Dombey, I'm so sorry. Thinking old Broglie was going to rip me again and... Oh, there you are. Just like someone coming back from the dead. Easy, easy, all. I know it's been a shock. Please, dry your eyes. Here, use this. Oh, no, you better not. <laughs> it's because I'm so happy to see you, dear Walter. <laughs> Miss Dombey. Yes, Mr Gay. I don't know what to say, except I found my long-lost brother again. Brother? Yes, yes, of course, Miss Dombey, always. But we'd heard the newspapers, the reports... Were exaggerated. Don't you listen to him, Missy. He swam like a hero, and he saved the first mate of that ship, and they were the only two left alive. Uh, drifting for weeks upon the sea, gathering water from rain, catching seabirds when they could, and drift without an oar under the sun. Oh before being picked up by a China clipper and carried all the way... To China? <laughs> really, it was the stories the captain used to tell me when I was a boy that saved us. I was as familiar with shipwreck as most lads are with their favourite boxer. <laughs> but how long? Well, it seemed like years. They told me after it was only a fortnight. I wanted to send word, but... It there, was... they were conveyed to China. <laughs> I told them to send yeah. you to the office, to Dombey and Son. Word never came. But you did... Dear, dear brother, and I'm so glad that... Oh, I really do feel that there is some hope in this world. Well, the, the captain told me you had to leave your home. I have no home. Whilst Captain Edward Cuttle has a bunk and a deck, you have a home. Thank you, Captain. And with you and Walter and... Where's Mr Toots? He was here. I think he was ready to defend me to the death. Ah, uh, you see, he took the dog for a walk. The dog not being able to settle with Waller, and the dog wanted to take a large bite out of Waller. And poor Mr Toots, <laughs> yeah, wanting to take a large bite out of Waller too. <laughs> is he this Toots? Is, is there an agreement between you? Uh, he is Diogenes' old master, and he knew Paul and was fond of him. And I am fond of Toots. But he's not my brother, Walter, nor ever will be. And Walter thinks... I do not want to be your brother either, and I do want to be a good deal more than Toots. Still, he is a good fellow. I believe he's trying to find your old maid. Well, I don't know about you young folks, but I miss my breakfast and I miss my lunch, and now I'm damn sharp set, so what say I send out for oysters and pie and a glass or two, and we shall celebrate the return home of Waller Gay to his friends. <laughs> and to his sister. <laughs> oh, give him up. He won't come. Does death give up? You ask me that. <laughs> He'll come. <laughs> Good Mrs Brown and Alice. There may be anger between them, but they share one thing. A desire for revenge. And they wait. He might look at us like we're two toads, but he's so angry the whole world couldn't satisfy him. As angry as I am, Mother. What happened to you could have happened to I. And often enough has happened to any woman in this world. And each of us burning with it the same. For him, it's a world turned upside down. Shh. Someone's coming. <gasps> Open the door. A poor place for a great gentleman, but there's no harm in it. You know me, sir. You know my handsome daughter. You can trust us to be closed-mouthed about our business. I want nothing. I do not want to be here. And yet, here you are. What do you have to tell me? What do you have to pay, my lord? I am not accustomed to give money for items of no value. But if you are put upon a track, if you should be set on your way... Then I will pay you well. Money will do it, eh? In places such as this, I think so. Is there nothing more powerful than money? Not here. But you should know of something that is more powerful, sir. A woman's anger. You go too far. You know a woman's anger is pretty much the same here as it is in your fine house. I am angry. I have been for many years. 
I have as good a reason for my anger as you do, and its object is the same man. I have nothing in common with you. Nothing to share. I am something you use to gain your ends. Well, I have my ends too. I want to know what you find out. I want to be there at the end. I want him to look in my eyes as once I looked in his and see no hope. Go on, then. What do you know? Not so fast, my gentleman. <coughs> we have to wait for somebody. What do you mean? It has to be twisted out, screwed and twisted, for it won't come easy. But you can trust good Mrs Brown to do the work. How long? Do we have to wait? Oh, soon. Soon. <laughs> oh, nothing like finishing off a good meal with a good cup of tea. Captain, I don't mind if you finish off with rum, just as long as I don't have to drink it. Ah, uh, now that's thoughtful of you, my dear. Or if you like your pipe. Oh, still smoking that dreadful mixture, Captain. Served me well on a dozen different oceans, my boy. Aren't there only seven, Captain? That you knows about. But as to what I knows... <laughs> <laughs> I must be away. Going, Walter? Where? He slings his hammock at Brogley's. It, it's within hail. It's my fault there's a homeless sister in your place. Dear, dear Miss Dombey, if I may call you so. Walter. If anything could make me happier than being able to see you and talk to you, it would be... Yeah, it, it would be being able to do you a service. You are my perfect brother. You are so changed since I went away. It hasn't been an age, and yet an age seems to have passed. When I went, you were... But now I've come back, you are... Captain Cuttle has never kept a keener watch. Not in the hurricane season itself has his eye been sharper. I am cast adrift, Walter. From my father, from my home, from all that I called... Florence. Florence. <laughs> the captain takes the young man by the arm. Avast my eyes, Waller. Sheer off for now, my boy, and leave her with me. And tonight the poor girl has to make her way through treacherous shoals. She'll need the old pilot by her side. But come the morning, come the man. Come again in the morning, and we'll be safe at anchor. Good night, Miss Dombey. Please believe me, I'm always, always at your service. God bless you, Walter. I'll see you ashore, my dear lad. Now come along. As night falls, some go, some come. And everything that goes around... Now, sir, go through and wait behind the door there and listen. And see what you think <coughs> it worth, eh? Your time and your money. Go now. Very well. But I will Go. Listen. Oh, Rob the Grinder. Why, here you are. Seeing as you asked me to drop by, Mar Brown. That ain't such a surprise after all, is it? Hello, beauty. Careful oh. of your tongue, boy. It may get cut off. Oh, right. And what could cut off my tongue? My sharp scissors. Snip, snip. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Grinder. Have a drink. I don't know that I have the time, Mar Brown. I, I, I'm a busy man. I'll use the time. Here, easy. Easy go, easy come, Grinder. A toast. Your continued good fortune, eh? <laughs> Don't want to waste rum. Look, what's on your mind, Ma? Just tell me. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, very good. Now out with it. What's the griff? You, Robbie. Me? Your master. Hey, drink up. No, nah, no more for me. I wasn't asking, Grinder. Drink up now. There's a good Grinder. Then you can tell us how your master is getting on. My master ain't none of your business, Ma. He's a sight too sharp for you. Oh, sharp as my scissors. Huh? Sharp as your eyes. Let's see, shall we? Which is the sharpest, scissors or rice? Hold him, Ali. Snip, snip. Let me go. Get off me. What? Strong for a girl, ain't I, Grinder? Help, help. That's it. Call a constable. What do you want? Drink up, Robbie. Here, let me help you. <laughs> 
Like a baby, eh? Here's a good boy. <laughs> Leave me alone. I ain't done you no harm. You ain't done us no good yet, Eva. Are you still in work, Grinder? Still being paid. Nothing to do. Not a lot. Drink up. Here, drink. <laughs> Master gone abroad. Could have. Did you ever see the lady, dearie? I never saw no lady. Drink up. <sighs> Now, Robbie, little Robbie, my dear sweet Robbie, you've just put down a bottle or more of the hundred proof, so I shouldn't reckon you've much left for a fight, not even for standing up easy. So I want you to look at these here scissors. See them plain? Yeah, I can see them. I ain't blind. I will cut it off, Robbie, I swear to you, thieves on her. I will cut it off. Then I will put out your eyes and then we'll let you go blind and dumb. Blind and dumb. Nothing to lose, see, Grinder. I'm dying. <clears throat> they reckon I won't last a month or two more. I'm a dead woman. I'm a ghost, Grinder. Crying vengeance. Oh. God, save me from these bloody mad bitches. Now, the lady, Mrs. Dombey, where did she go? How did she go? Did she laugh? Did she cry? Did they go together? They went separate. Good lad. I put her on a train to Southampton. He went separate. For the same place? France. They went to France. Meeting later, he said. Good, Robbie, good. Where in France are you sending his letters, his money, all those little things he entrusted to you? I can't. He'd kill me. I swear he would. You don't know what he's like. Oh, what I do know, sweetie, is that he's in France and I'm here and I will cut it off. <laughs> I dare say. Then write it, letter by letter, on the table. It's dirty enough. Letter by letter, Grinder. Then you let me go. Letter by letter. And letter by letter, Rob the Grinder writes D I J O N. Good boy. Now, so nice seeing you, Robbie. I hate you. I hate all bloody women. Drop by again sometime, dearie. Well, my lord, worth the money. Where are they? What did he write? Oh, dear. Oh, oh look at the mess. Oh, that all cost something to clear up. The money. <laughs> Unusually cold for the time of year. Damn it, sir. Joey Bagstock is Joey bad hand at counterfeiting. If you want to hold your friends off, Dombey, then Joey ain't the man for you. This ain't Joey blow with the wind, sir. This is Joey Blunt. And if there's a man in this world, Dombey, that you can depend on, I say it again, Joey Blunt is the man you can depend on. <laughs> to come to the point, that's it. Damned if it ain't. <laughs> Major Bagstock is not to be denied his mission of consolation. In his time, he's laid waste entire provinces for Her Majesty. He's not about to let Dombey stand in sympathy's way. Very well, Major. I am glad to see you. Now, Dombey, I'm man of the world. You are a man of the world. Damn it, we are both men of the world, ain't we? I believe so. And who would have thought it, eh? The lady vanishes. Poof, just like that. Pshaw. I can tell you, sir, I'm Joey bemused, absolutely set back on me heels. Would have killed her mother to see it. Fortunately, that lady is dead, and so spared the spectacle. Running off with a manager. Pshaw. Never trusted the fellow. Too many damn teeth. A manager who has left the company in a bad position, Major. It will take some straightening out. No gentleman, he, sir. I have telegraphed to stop the funds he was extracting from the accounts. He shall not have them. I was referring to the... to your... what he does have, which is the lady. And, sir, as a man of the world... You are aware that the world has opinions in these matters. I am, Major. And in this matter, as all the world knows, and Joey B in particular, why, sir, in this matter, I'm Joey Balls. Pistol Balls. For a shot must be taken at this fellow, and Joey B is your man in this, sir. Thank you, Major. When the time comes, I will call upon you, but the time is not yet upon us. <laughs> so, where are they? Do you know? I believe I know where they are to meet, if my information is correct. It may be, it may not be. Then Joey is behind you or before you. Damn it. Joey is by your side, Dombey. I've crawled down culverts in my time. Why have you crawled down culverts, Major? Wounded tigers. 
pursuit of. Have to finish them off, Dombey. Can't leave them to do more damage. When do we start? I have ordered a carriage to the station. We take the train to Southampton at four. Ha! Good man. I'll pack me pistols. <laughs> It'll be Joey Bang for that blackguard. Days have passed since her flight and arrival, since the return of Walter Gay, but that young man has not yet spoken to the object of his affections. With the honesty you deserve, Miss Dombey, the captain said you were walking by the river and I took it upon myself. I like to walk here. It's so peaceful. The river runs on and on forever, it seems, and our troubles and hopes mean nothing. That seems a very old thing to say, Miss Dombey. I feel old, Walter. I've been through so much. But walk with me. Something I wanted to say to you. Of course. You said I was changed when we talked last week. Well, it's true, I am. Do you remember the gift I gave you before you went away? Oh, I have it still. It will never leave me. I'm glad of that, at least. At least? I gave it to you as my brother. But I am not your brother, Miss Dombey. No. That can never be so again. Now I don't understand. Oh, I thought you did. When you said you were not my brother, did you not mean that I could not be your sister? Well, I don't think I quite meant it that way, Miss Dombey. <sighs> no, it is clear to me now. All that happened to you, being sent away, the wreck, nearly losing your life, losing all your possessions, all that is my fault. How can you say so? If we had not been friends, if you had not rescued me all those years ago, if we had not been brother and sister, then my... then my father and Mr Carker would never have sent you away. Miss Dombey. You will always be the knight who saved me, the friend, the brother I depended on, but I cannot be sister to you anymore, Walter Gay. I and mine have wronged you. Florence... I would not have done it for the world, but I was alone. I had no advice. I allowed others Brothers to... and sisters, be damned, Florence. Advice, be damned, Florence. Miss Dombey, be damned. Florence, Florence, Florence. <laughs> That's what I've called you in my heart since... since I can remember. There. I've said it. Now I can go away and you can forget all about no, me. I would not forget you for the world. Walter, are you very poor? Very. And are you going away again soon, Walter? Yes. When I was in China, I, I was offered a place if I returned. Walter, I can give up nothing for you, for I have nothing to give except my heart, and that is yours already. But as what? As who? <laughs> if you will take me for your wife, Walter, then I will go to the ends of the earth with you. All that stuff about brothers and sisters, you were... <laughs> Florence Dombey, you were playing with me. Is that a yes? Florence! I mean very! Yes, 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 yes! <laughs> Florence! I believe you may kiss me, Walter. Because if you don't, I believe that Captain Cuttle, who is very badly concealed over there behind that boat, will explode. Florence. Woola! <laughs> Woola! Hats off to you, Missy! Hats off to you, my lad! Captain! Your hat! Walter! <laughs> Oh, too late. It's too far. And not the first hat I've lost to David Jones. Captain, we are to be married. Well, I should hope you wouldn't be a kissing of that young woman if you wasn't, my lad. <laughs> Captain, isn't it just wonderful? To tell you the truth, Miss it ain't no surprise to Ned Cuttle at all. I always knew right from the start that you two was made to sail in convoy together. <laughs> Hearts of oak. All our ships, <laughs> jolly towns, all our men, we always are ready. It's all very well for your parlez-vous and your rich sources, Dombey, but why can't Monsieur Crapo build a decent railway network? That's what I'd like to know. It's Joey Bruised Buttocks this night, I can tell you. <laughs> I believe it is the legacy of the Napoleonic Wars, Major. The infrastructure... No, I, I wasn't actually asking, Dombey. It was more in the way of a comment on this infernal coach and this infernal apology for a road and that infernal devil on the box. Nevertheless, we are getting close, Major. Are we, by God? <laughs> or maybe that other fella, the infernal one, eh? Either way, we'll see an end to it tonight. It can't be too soon for Joey B. <laughs> the Major is, frankly, having a wonderful time of it. It's the best adventure since the last one. It has to be settled, and the world has to see it has been settled. 
the house of Dombey and Son must not be touched. Surely there's no, no long-term damage. That man was manager for long enough to extend his influence into every part of the business, Major. I thought he was a brilliant manager. <laughs> I was right. I thought I could trust him. I was wrong. Mm. I thought I could trust her. If for no other reason that she owed me her living, her loyalty... Oh, Joey B ain't a man for reflection, Dobby. What's done is done. <laughs> and what remains to be done is to act. Hey, Johnny Frenchman, whip him up. Whip him up, mon homme. Whip him up. I have never seen you looking as beautiful <laughs> as you do tonight. You surprised me. <sighs> I've been standing here looking at you, Edith. I didn't expect you so soon. I thought we were due to meet tomorrow. What a day, tomorrow. It's only time, and we have all the time we need. She doesn't answer. Her face is pale, her lips red, her eyes as bright and as cold as ever they were, and Dark Karka smiles a long white smile of triumph. It's settled. I've arranged a villa in Sicily. It will be ready for us in a few weeks. And there we'll both seek compensation for old slaveries. My dear, let me... Stand still, or I shall murder you. Edith, what is this? You can't go waving guns around. We're not Italians. You and I, we are alike... And we are together. I bought it this morning to blow my own brains out. Now I warn you again, come no nearer on your life. But Tosh, we're alone, out of sight. And try and frighten me with these tricks of virtue. Do you think I'm frightened of you, James? Would I be here alone with you if I were? Telling you to your face what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and what is it you have to tell me, you... You tiger, you... You beautiful tiger... More desirable when you are angry than any queen at peace. Back away. Sit down, or I will use this. Do you think I'm your husband, Edith? Come. Be sensible. This is what we planned. It's what we wanted. I think it's what you planned, James, for a long time. You planted ideas, suggestions, hints in my mind. You made sly insinuations about my marriage. You delivered barely hidden threats against my feelings for the girl Florence. You had a plan, James. You were leading me to a place where I would have no choice but to talk and act as you desired. Yes, I'm sure you kept a, a good account of everything, Edith. You always had a head for figures, you and your mother, as do I, for the value of things. Now... Let me order some supper, some wine. Let us relax. This anger, yes, against your husband, but things are changed now. That's why you ran away with me, Edith. Did I run away with you? What? Mr Carker, the manager, has an uneasy feeling that things aren't going quite as charmingly, as pleasurably, as he had planned for this evening's tete-a-tete. James, I am a woman who from her childhood has been put up, appraised, offered, sold until my soul was sick. I have not had a grace, an accomplishment, any part of me that has not been used to enhance my value in the market. My mother, my friends, all looked on and approved. There is not one of them I care for more than I'd care for a dog. And I do not like dogs. I am a hollow woman standing in a hollow world. And there is nothing I have, my looks, my hopes, my reputation, that is not worthless to me. That's what I thought. That's what you thought to use. That is what aroused your appetite. That I was as available as any woman with a halter around her neck for sale in a marketplace. He shows all his teeth in a terrible smile. I know that. You wanted my degradation. You wanted me in the mud. You were prepared to blackmail, to threaten, to lie, to get what you wanted. All the stratagems of love. And you were prepared to... We meet and part tonight, James Carker. You've fallen on Sicilian days and sensual hopes too soon. Edith, what kind of devil has got into you? What did you expect if you went down to hell to lie with a she-devil, James? Fairness, compassion, understanding, a soft heart... I could have had Dombey and Son if I'd wanted... 
I didn't. I wanted you. And yes, your degradation. Do you know what I gave up for it? Do you really think I'm going to let you walk out of here alone tonight? No, James. I think you are going to walk out of here alone tonight. Why? Because, as all betrayers are in the end, you have been betrayed too. What do you mean? I saw my husband in a carriage in the town today. It's a damned lie, you bitch. He did not see me, but I saw his face, and there was murder in it, James. <gasps> the window. See you. There, Dombey. There she is. He'll not be far away. Oh, stay, madam. Wait. Well, James, what's it to be? Stand and fight or run like a rat? I, I don't understand. I, I planned everything. Was it you? I will give you this one comfort. No, I will give you this one hope. The window at the end of the corridor, the stable roof. You can hire a carriage in the main square. If you think your life is worth saving, then save it now. It is as if all the cold in Edith's life has frozen the pair solid, meters deep in cold blue ice. They stand cold in a cold universe facing one another. Cold, cold, cold. Oh, my own pretty darling, Miss Floyd. To think it should have come to this and you here all on your own, thrown out of house and home, without a rag to call your own and no Susan to see for you. Susan's back. The nipper has returned. <laughs> oh, Susan, I've missed you so much. And I wasn't really thrown out, Susan. I went because... Well, because there was no reason to stay anymore. Oh... Oh, let me look at you. Oh, my, oh, my. But you're to be married. Really? Truly? Absolutely? In a fortnight, Susan. Oh. See, I'm sewing my own gown. <laughs> sewing her own gown? We'll put a stop to that. I'll be sewing your wedding gown or I want to know the reason why. Of course you will, Susan. <laughs> but who told you? Why, Toots! And you know I was wrong about Toots. He's a good fellow, is Toots. <laughs> if a little funny in the intellectuals, but I was always partial to a sense of humour. He is a good man, Susan, you're right. And highly comical. Seeing him and that diogeny. <laughs> oh, where are they? Bring them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There you are, you hairy old monster. Oh, well, I wouldn't say I was exactly hairy, would you, Miss Nipper? Oh, you are a one, Toots, you are! <laughs> Mr Toots, I owe you my everlasting thanks for finding my friend Susan, bringing her home again. And Toots stands in the doorway and beams and beams and beams <laughs> and sneaks a look at Susan Nipper, who beams back at him. And they beam together. Uh, I can only say... Now that your heart has been trothed to Mr Gay, well, what I want to say, to say it to all the world, uh, toutes les mondes, is uh, something that, if you know what I mean, because, to tell you the truth, I don't, uh, but I must leave you now and forever, because... Mr Toots, if you, who are one of my oldest friends, should stay away from this house for any reason at all, it would make me very unhappy... You don't want to make me unhappy, do you? No. And it would make me very unhappy indeed, Toots. And you wouldn't want to make Susan Nipper unhappy, would you? Well, it's the last thing Toots would ever want. And I'm glad to hear it. And it would make Diogenes very unhappy. Oh, well, I'll stay. Of course he will. <laughs> and if it is at all possible, Toots beams even more. And... In the town of Dijon, on the first floor of a small hotel, journeys end in... Where is he? Not here. I can see that, madam. 
Where is he? Where is nothing to me. It seems that our marriage is nothing to you either. Can you say that it was? It was blessed in church before God. We will both pay for that lie, Dombey. Do you persist, madam, in this flouting of all decency, of all respect, of the world itself? Oh, I see you blush. At least you have some shame. Turn up the lamp. A blow. He struck you. In the end. Perhaps you think that is all I am worth. You mistake yourself, madam. I do not consider your worth in this matter at all. The disgrace falls upon the house of Dombey and Son. Oh, I have no doubt money will salve the wound. It generally does in my experience. Oh. Oh, I see. He has struck at you too. What did he do? Dombey and Son. The company. That is nothing to you, Mrs. Dombey. No, but I think very much to you, Mr. Dombey. Is it bad? That is none of your concern. Then it is. Is it fatal? I will not repeat myself, madam. I care no more for you than you do for me, but perhaps neither one of us deserved James Carker. Do not pity me, madam. And yet, strangely, I have had enough of hate. He gave it all up to buy me. His career, his position, his hopes of succeeding you in the company. <coughs> he has nothing left now. I think he will run, but he will go to earth in the end, in his own part of the world. It's what he knows. He will go back. And you, if I were to offer you... If you were, it would be an offence against your great dignity, Dombey. He stands a moment appraising her, then nods, as if he's found her to be dross, paste, false, not worth the purchase price. He turns and leaves the room. You! Monsieur. The horses, are they fresh? Of course. Why, of course? Monsieur was expected. Madame ordered the horses to be ready. Oh, Madame, she knew. She knew I'd run. Oh, God. Very well, go. Where, sir, shall I go? Go! Just go! And go they do. Across mountains and plains. Across borders. From day to night to day. And for Mr. Carker, a fevered vision of what has been. I understand nothing of you, sir. And yet I thought... Something passed between us, an understanding. I have complete confidence in you. Nothing you do could disturb. What did you expect? <laughs> A kind heart? <clears throat> Always onwards, never resting. Long roads, sun, rain, hot, cold, wine. And then gin and gin and more gin. And still more, as if dark carker is a broken bowl that can never ever be filled full again. The consequences of his actions spread far and wide, through the world of business, through his family. His sister Harriet sits writing alone in her cottage, writing a letter that will never be sent. Will you let me in or must I speak out here? You're ill. I'm dying. What of it? Sit down. Rest yourself. I'll get something to drink. Some food. I want nothing of yours. Look at me. At least dry yourself. When I was young and pretty, a man looked on me with favour. He seemed to be a great man, at least to such as my mother and I. And I went to him. I went for love. And he went for pleasure. And a year, not much more, and that was that for him. But not for me. Wretchedness and ruin came for me. Why do you look so? Is it because you know the man? Is it because his blood runs in your veins too? Stop well, it! Who do you write to? It's none of your business. Do you know where he is? No, you don't. But I do. One day I will send it. And he will read it. What do you say? I say, I forgive him. <laughs> you forgive? 
Because I hope to be forgiven. I gave my heart to a man who stole money, who, who took his own life. I loved him. I love him still. I cannot feel hate. Oh, you should try it. It keeps you going longer than anything else I know. I'll be dead in the ground six months without my hate for James Carker. <laughs> and I will have him. That is what I promised myself. And yet, I despise my weakness. Why did you come? I came to feed my hate. To suck you dry. Blood, guts, marrow bones and all. I came to save my hatred. He's back in the country. I must go to him. No. I will save you from that. I will go. I will have my say and then I will leave him be. Whatever is left, that is yours, Miss Carker. And do with it as you will. A railway hotel on the south coast of England. And come to rest at last. Are you ready to order, sir? What do you want? Order, sir? Dinner? Or another drink, perhaps? Gin and hot, is it, sir? The traveller's drink? Bit of a rail traveller, are we, sir? Yes. Yes, another drink. Um, and I have been travelling, yes. A long way. That's the railways for you, sir. Non-stop, they say. Gentlemen here, sir, don't know whether they're coming or going sometimes. Yourself now, sir. Is it business or pleasure? Enough. Yeah, stop it. I... Sure I didn't mean to offend, sir? I'll get you a drink, sir. Yes. Yes, the, the, the bottle. No food. I'll... I'll order in my room. Send it to my room. <laughs> Lack of sleep. Surfeit of gin. <laughs> he has become a man on the run. Nowhere to go, nowhere to stop. Always another morning. Another station. Another train. Another destination bringing neither peace nor rest. Another morning. Kidneys, sir? Kedgery, a cutlet or two? I have some nice bloaters, sir. Many uh, of the gentlemen enjoy a bloater of a morning. A tea, sir? Or is there a coffee, gentlemen? Uh, the, the trains. The express. Uh, what time does it come in? That will be at half past nine, sir. If sir wishes to catch the express, shall I have sir's luggage conveyed to the platform? Uh, no luggage. Just the, the coffee. And, and another bottle of gin. Dark Mr. Carker, alone on the upline platform. Dark Carker, already anointed for death, it seems. For death is on him. James! James Carker! What? Edith! James Carker! I have been looking for you a long time. And now I have found you! Alice! No! No, that can't be! You went away! James! I loved you! And you... You hurt me! But that's all over now! Uh, you died! Where did you come from? You can't be here! Wait! I have to talk to you! James! I can save your life! My life! Oh, that thing, hardly worth the saving now, wouldn't you say? He trips, or does he step from the platform onto the rails? He looks at his trousers, once so immaculate, now torn and dirty. How can that be? He is Carker, and Carker is the manager, and the train is rushing upon him. Beaten down, caught up, struck limb from limb, torn by the iron wheels, the stream of life burnt up with fiery heat and scattered along the track, still white, the teeth of his dismembered smile. And aboard a ship 
making its sedate and graceful way across the Mediterranean, a lady stands by the rail, her face calm in the shade of a wide-brimmed hat. She talks to a fellow passenger. I have always wanted to see Naples and the remains of the Roman Empire. There is, I think, a great deal of comfort to be found in knowing that very little in this world lasts forever and that, in the end, all things change. Things change. And Edith <laughs> smiles. We therefore commit his body to the ground. There is not a large crowd. Harriet Carker stands by her brother's grave, pale, shocked, her tears forever lost. Distant, hardly visible at all through the rain, Alice Brown stands, grim as cold death, between good Mrs. Brown and Rob the Grinder. These are the sole earthly mourners of the mortal remains of James Carker, manager, Dombey and son. Do you remember, Walter, the first time we walked these streets together? How could I ever forget? You were a little raggedy girl, not at all proud, Miss Dombey, <laughs> and I was a little raggedy messenger boy and as cheeky as the devil. And now, who knows when we shall see these streets again? Why, we'll be back before you know it. Two years on the China Station, and this time our fortunes will be made. I don't care about fortunes, Walter. I'm glad that I bring you nothing, that you have nothing, because do you know what money is and what it can do? Buy brandy for the captain and a proper wedding dress for you. <laughs> the captain has enough brandy, and the dress that Susan made is all the dress I want. And you are all I want in this world. Well, I think I also want... What? <laughs> What is it? To be married, Florence, and if we dawdle much longer, we shall be late for our own wedding. Another day, another service. I will. This one... I will. ...full of hope. Who giveth this woman to be married to this man? <laughs> oh, easy all. Uh, that'd be me, uh, Captain Ned Cuttle, and proud to do so, my hearty. And any man who says I don't, why, I'll cut him down, like a Barbary pirate. I now and pronounce it... you man and wife. <laughs> Their ship is due to leave. Florence and Walter have gone straight from the church to the jetty. Their friends go with them, reluctant to lose the happy couple. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Toots, you will look after Diogenes, won't you? Oh, a sacred duty, Miss Donvier. Uh, more than sacred, for as you know, uh, Toots can be counted on and... Oh, and... Dash it, I had, I had just the thing a moment ago, just the very thing that would have... Toots, I have another request for you. Look after Susan. Always look after Susan for me. Oh, always. Uh, my dear lad, my hearty, my dear young woman, you'll always be a birth for you on Ned Cuttleship. And don't you forget it, nor don't you forget him. <laughs> oh, this is the second time I've seen you aboard. Well, uh, this time may heaven go with you, because for sure an angel does. Now shake me hand, boy. And away with your left, left hand, left oh. hand, Waller. <laughs> oh, Miss Sloan. Not Miss anymore, Susan, but Mrs. Oh, God bless you, and... and... Always remember, I'll be here waiting when you come back. And, and I'll tell you what, what, Susan? I better not be the only nipper when you do. <laughs> That's a joke, to me, because I'm Susan Nipper, and when you have a little baby of your own, why, that'll be a nipper too. See? <laughs> See? Captain, I have a letter here. When you hear that we have made safe landfall, then send it. I, I will, Walla, I will. Susan, Toots... Goodbye, and God bless you. God bless you all. Take care. Bye. Bye, Bye. 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 And there is a happy end, or a happy beginning, to the married life of Florence and Walter Gay. But lives, married or otherwise, are seldom as neat and tidy as counting houses, nor their message as... Call me Joey Blunt, Dombey. Call me Joey Brutal. 
but I ain't never seen a balance book so unbalanced. It is worse than I feared, Major. Is there <laughs> nothing to be done? These books. This one. This one. This one. They are the reckoning of the past, of that man's depredations, of that woman's scandalous behaviour. They reflect public opinion. They are not the house of Dombey and Son. Dombey endures... Danny, man. Joey B ain't a fellow who quits the field before the battle is over and the colours are lost, but I tell you, Dombey, this battle is over. These colours are lost. Save what you can. Settle down and live quietly. Let the world forget what has happened here. Just go your way in peace. I will not quit. There is a great house to rebuild. No. Give it up, man. You've lost it all. Your wife, your company, your daughter. I am Paul Dombey. In the great dark counting house, Dombey attempts to climb back up. But he has fallen, never to be raised any more. The confidence of the city is gone forever. For the night of his worldly ruin, there is no tomorrow's sun. For the shame of his marriage, there is no purification. For the loss of his boy, there is no return. And for him, for Dombey, only a letter. Sir, I am married to your daughter. I love her beyond everything. She has united her life with mine, despite the uncertainties and dangers we shall both face. She was alone, thrown away by the man who should have cared most, her father. No. I do not care if you hate us or forgive us, but know this. If there ever comes a time when it will comfort you to know that Florence has someone with her whose whole purpose is to cancel the memory of so many cruel, loveless years, ah. then you may rest secure that that man is yours sincerely, Walter Gay. Oh. Papa, what's money? Money? Paul, what is money? Yes, Papa, what is money? Why, um, money makes the world go round. Money... Drives the ships that deliver the cargoes to Dombey and Son, and we make guineas, shillings, halfpennies, farthings. But what is money? What can it do? Oh, money, Paul. Can it make things better, Papa? Money can do anything, anything at all. Money can make it right again. Money, money. Zombie and... <sighs> Time flows away for Dombey, for Florence and Walter, for the captain who, more than a year later, takes a stroll through the city with... Toots has made, Captain. He has made a decision. Have you, Mahalty? Absolutely. And here is the thing, Captain. The thing being Susan Nipper. Remarkable sharp young woman. Remarkable. Thinks I have a comic turn. Thinks a lot of Toots, you know. Toots thinks a lot of her, and... Do you know what else Toots thinks? Well, I think I'm beginning to smoke it, Toots. So, should I ask her, Captain, if she'll do me the honour of being Mrs Toots? Splice the main brace, my hearty, about time too. Of course you should. And here's me hand on it. <laughs> Ooh, left hand, Mr Toots, left hand. Oh, congratulations, Captain. <laughs> Yeah, I'm supposed to say that. Good Lord. Is that Dombey and Son they're clearing out, Captain? It is. The old firm's done. That's what they say. The biggest crash in 50 years. And Dombey? Worse to that, I don't know. All I do know is that he sold up everything to pay the creditors. Not in full, but they all got something. They say he stood there like a statue when they pronounced him bankrupt. Not a flicker to show what he was feeling. Do you think that sort feels anything, Captain? Ain't they just as cold as a clock? Toots, half of that man is in that angel Florence. Can he be all bad to have made her? And time flows on, and like the tide, waits for no one, and like the tide, brings home the travellers to their friends and to a situation 
which is all change. I don't like it, my dear. Joey B don't like it one bit. Joey's got the blue devils seeing his old friend like this. Is there nothing left? <sighs> There's enough for these rooms, shabby as they are. <sighs> but he don't see them. He don't see nothing anymore. His wits are gone, all used up. He's an empty suit, my dear. Old clothes, rags and bones. <sighs> I'm sorry. Thank you, Major Backstock. I'll go in alone. Father? Hey, who is it? What do you want? It's Florence. Florence went away. I have no daughter. <laughs> Didn't they tell you? Old Dombey's gone. Wiped out. The dust falls like century rain on the old man who sits looking into nothing. So old, Florence thinks. Never was he as old as this. What is it? What do you want? There's no money. There's nothing left. Nothing at all. He has been broken. It is, Florence. Look at me, Papa. She pulls back a curtain. Grey light floods the room. But she stands, glowing at its centre. Who are you? You know who I am, Papa. You have always known. Too late. It's all gone. Old Dombey's gone. Didn't they tell you? Nothing left. But there is. Nothing. I want you to come with me. I can't. I cannot go out. Let them see me now. Come with me, Father. Oh. Oh. She takes his hand oh. and, slowly, together, they go out of the room. Look at the hatch is low, sir. That's it. Step low in there. Yeah, get a hold, you oh, Be careful of your head. Here. Let me help you, sir. Oh, Toots. I thought I'd be glad to see this, but now I've seen it. You ain't glad at all, old girl. And Toots honours you for it. Ooh. Come now, father. Through into the parlour. What do you want with me? I have nothing. Nothing left. Nothing to live for. Here, sir. Look. <coughs> look and see. What? It is. Papa, it is your grandson. My. My. Grandson? He. He is like. Paul. Like... That is his name, Papa. He is why we've come back. He is why we've sought you out, sir. He is why you're here today. And because of him, we'll find it in our hearts to forgive each other. Because of him, we'll find it in our hearts to love each other. My grandson. Because you see, Papa, we have everything to live for, everything in the world. We have tomorrow. 